station. This is MSNBC. How do you hear me? I hear you loud and clear. Welcome aboard the space station. Well, love being with you and chatting with you, Commander Kelly. want to start off by saying huge congratulations on your first ever spacewalk. So huge congratulations on that. Uh, you left the space station to get some maintenance chores done. You had a long laundry list if you're going to call it that, of things to do, seven hours, over seven hours. But did you, did you take a moment before having to knock all those out to kind of soak it all in and really realize how exhilarating it really is when you stepped outside? Yeah, there were certain uh, times when there was a, a little downtime that I could appreciate the view. One was when, when I opened, we opened up the hatch and... Uh, um, it took us a little while uh, longer to get outside, so I had the view of the earth down below, and uh, that was pretty spectacular. Um, you know, it's really, it's kind of hard to describe the difference in the view when you're just looking through the, uh, the thin pane of glass of the helmet versus uh, three panes of glass here uh, through the window of the space mm -hmm. station or the, or the space shuttle. It's pretty spectacular. And with all the extraordinary things that you do on a daily basis, do you still have those pinch yourself moments where you kind of sit back maybe at that time and kind of go, you know what, this is pretty darn cool? You know, I sometimes I think just when I'm doing my everyday work here and, you know, floating from one place to another and, and doing all the important things we do, I find it hard to believe that I'm actually – you know, living on the space station, and I've been here since March. Um, and, you know, that's been the case with all my flights. This is really a privilege uh, to be able to do this. And I think, uh, you know, the, the most of the folks, anyway, that, that, that have a chance to do this recognize it as a privilege. Before you left, you said probably the toughest part or what you'll miss most is the human interaction, the contact with others. You've been in orbit for 216 consecutive days with limited human contact. Uh, now that you're at this point, is it tougher than you thought it would be, just as tough? That's, uh, you know, it's hard to say when you, you think back to, you know, what your expectations were of, of, of I think, anything in life. Um, I definitely feel like I've been up here for a long time, um, almost like I have forgotten what it's like to live on Earth and do, you know, certain you know, all the stuff we get to experience on Earth. And I do recognize that I have a long time ahead of me, you know, but having said that, I, I, I think I'm pretty sure I'm going to get through it without out much of a, much issues. How is that for you, knowing you're literally worlds away and there's the detachment and you hear and see all the things that are happening here on Earth, world events, news events, presidential politics and the race for president. We saw your Instagram picture of uh, Hurricane Patricia, but knowing that there is that detachment that you can't be part of, is that, is that tough for you at all? You know, that's a good question. I think, I think in some ways you, you have a different uh, a sense of being, you know, an audience um, for the things that happen on Earth and you feel detached from it. And I think as a result, you pay more attention to it with kind of a, a different level of attention. Um, maybe, you know, more empathy, more uh, trying to, uh, you know, understand why certain things happen and why we are the way we are and do things that we do. You know, it's, it's definitely a different perspective that, uh, you know, I feel like like I have, and um, you know, and I think it's because of we are not on Earth. Well, it's fascinating your view and how you share it with us on your Instagram uh, feed. I'm your newest follower because it is fascinating, and loved your flu shot that you gave yourself. Uh, interesting, it's part of the mission with with your twin brother also getting his. It's part of the twin study here, and also your space burger. Uh, in that as well. So, uh, you know, it's funny that you kind of have your sense of humor up there with you, too. You know, I think, uh, you know, we have an obligation to, to share, um, you know, what we do here. Um, and, you know, certain things like the incredible view and, 
you know, certain like daily life activities, I think, you know, that, you know, people appreciate. So, you know, I try to do that as much as I, I can and as much as my spare time allows. And it's, uh, you know, it's something I enjoy. And how about the space burger? Was it good? And, and, and if not, what are you looking forward to the most when you get back as far as, as, far as eating or doing? Well, you know, this, this space burger was not a Earth burger, so it definitely wasn't as good. Um, <laughs> but as far as you know, s stuff stuff to do, um, you know, I'm definitely looking forward to the the freedom that that we have. And I think I think I appreciate my my freedom now more than I've been up here this long. You know, the ability to just walk outside. The ability to decide, you know, what you're going to do on a certain day. You know, our schedule is pretty much planned out for us, you know, minute by minute most of the days. And, you know, there's a reason for that, and it, it makes sense. But it still, I think, causes you to really appreciate the freedom you have to choose what you're going to do, when you're going to do it, mm -hmm. uh, that most people, uh, you know, free people on Earth enjoy at least, which, you know, we are a part of that in the United States. So... Um, you know, it's something I definitely don't take, a grant, take for granted, uh, maybe yeah. as much as I did before doing this, and uh, yeah. something I look forward to. Now, like watching uh, the presidential debate last night, were you able to catch it? You know, we were pretty tired after that EVA, but I did see some of it on, on the news <laughs> here that we have, uh, we have TV news running, so I saw some of the highlights. Yeah, but I can imagine a seven-plus-hour spacewalk with all that list uh, of lubricating the tips and getting all that grease and everything else that you got to do might keep you a little bit busy and might wear you out just a little bit. Commander Kelly, thank you so much again. Congratulations on that spacewalk, and best of luck to you. I hope to speak with you again. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Stay well. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the MSNBC portion of the event. Please stand by for a voice check from Time Magazine. Space Station, this is Time Magazine. How do you hear me? I hear you loud and clear, Shaul. Help me. Scott, it's great, great to hear your voice. Uh, congratulations on uh, the spacewalk yesterday. Uh, take me back to that moment where the hatch opens and it all reveals and it gets going. How do you feel? You know, I actually, we were, we were early, um, so I actually wasn't sure whether we were going to open up the hatch in uh, daylight or darkness. I w wasn't quite sure what time of day it was. Uh, the hatch doesn't have a window in it. So uh, when I, you know, cranked it open and it, you know, started coming up, to see the sunlight come in was... Uh, you know, it was pretty, uh, pretty spectacular. And then to have the hatch open and, and uh, you know, for the time we did before we went outside and, to, you know, just look at the earth, it's, uh, you know, it's really hard to describe. I, it was more, um, more impressive, more brilliant uh, looking through the, the helmet than I expected it to be. So, uh, yeah, it was pretty spectacular. After hundreds of hours of training uh, and years, I guess, of anticipation for the first one, how different is it than being in the pool, dropping into the real one? You know, the other thing I was actually surprised about, which I wasn't expecting, was how similar it is to the pool. Um, you know, most of the this, this stuff is... is uh, uh, very much the same how you uh, you know how you work how you manage your your tethers how uh, how you feel in the suit how the gloves feel um, you know the difference with this is you know the fact that you're you know 250 miles above the earth flying around at 17,500 miles an hour in a, in a vacuum and uh, you know extremes of, of temperatures and uh, you know the, the all the other things that that environment brings and you know if you put that part of it out of your mind it's actually you know really quite similar to to working in the pool the pool's a, a great environment uh, for training us one thing scott that's different is we were here 
in Houston watching every moment, and I was worried for you. It's, uh, it's real. After seven hours, how relieved and how tired were you getting back in there? Yeah, so, you know, we were pretty tired. It's, uh, you know, physically, it's, it's tough in, in some ways, especially on your hands. Um, you know, it's, I think most of the fatigue comes from the, you know, the amount of attention you're paying to what you're doing and, you know, trying to have 100% focus for, you know, not only the seven and a half hours or so we were outside, but, you know, our day started at uh, 6 a.m. and we got right into the, uh, the activities for getting into the suit. Um, by the time we got outside, I think it was about, you know, 12 uh, p.m. our time and then you know seven hours later by the time we were out of the suits it was uh, and cleaning up it was nine o'clock at night of you know a hundred percent focus so I think that part of it is what makes it most fatiguing. Moving on Scott, um, NASA discovered water on Mars and announced it, uh, that not long ago while you're up there. How much did that affect you? Your one-year mission is also part of the push to get to Mars. Was it personal? Was it special? Or was it different to receive the news up there? Well, you know, I think it's it's exciting to uh, to find a discovery like discovery like that that there is liquid water on Mars. We knew there was, you know, frozen water. Um, you know, water is obviously very important to life and. You know, when we go to Mars, we'll need water, and it'll be great if we don't have to bring it with us. Uh, but, you know, weight is very expensive to orbit, and if we can, you know, tank up while we're there, uh, you know, that'll, you know, drive the cost down for getting to Mars and maybe hopefully make it uh, a lot closer. You know, we follow a lot of the news up here and the, the space news, the, you know, the flyby of, uh, of Pluto, um, water on Mars, uh, you know, other things like that are, are very exciting to us, especially those that put us closer one day, like, you know, I hope this mission does to, to sending people to Mars. I know you love what you do, and it's amazing. Um, can you tell me, though, one day or one moment where you really said, God, I wish I was home? Yeah, you know, there are those those moments, um, you know, they're mostly personal, personal in nature that I probably wouldn't share here. But I think I think we all have them um, at times. Um, but for me, I do feel like this is a privilege, uh, you know, not only to be here for a whole year, but, uh, you know, just to have the have the chance to fly in space in general and, uh, you know, represent my my country. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, formerly when I was in the Navy, represent the Navy as a as an astronaut working at, at a in a program that's you know very important uh, for us, our our future, you know, and and an international program, which has really been one of the highlights of this um, you know space station partnership. Since you left, I find myself often tracking the ISS app and kind of looking for you to make a pass. I, I feel connected. I look at the space station. Um, on the flip side, do you guys ever up there kind of feel like you're looking at Earth as your whole life is up there and we're like the spaceship, or does that make sense to you? Yeah, absolutely. You know, you definitely feel like, uh, you know, there's a window right here that looks right down on the on the Earth. It's so actually open now. It's dark. I'm not sure exactly where we are, but you definitely feel like you're, you know, you're here and everyone else and everything that you care about and love and, you know, is important to you is down there. And I think it gives you a different, you know, a different perspective, a little bit more, uh, you know, I, I find myself like following the news and things that go on Earth more closely. And it, it actually has a more of a personal feeling to it, I guess. You know, I said in the previous interview, a little bit more empath empathy, I think, and and, uh, you know, just because you realize everything else is, is over there and uh, just gives a little bit different perspective. Does it ever get lonely up there? Um, no, I wouldn't say, you know, I wouldn't say lonely. Um, you know, we have the ability to, to interact, um, you know, electronically to, uh, 
uh, talk on the phone. So, um, you know, that provides an outlet for for those kind of feelings. You know, we get along great as a crew, and, uh, you know, I really appreciate the time I, you know, get to spend with my other crew members here. But at the same time, you know, you do miss, you know, people on Earth that are important to you and, uh, you know, more of a ver variety of interaction. But I wouldn't call it loneliness. You are obviously doing the one-year mission with Misha. How is your relationship with him kind of unraveling itself as time goes by, as the days tick away? Well, I wouldn't use the word unraveling. I would use, uh, you know, more of, uh, you know, our, our bond is, is stronger. You know, uh, you know, we recognize we're in this together, and, uh, you know, we call each other brother. My space, my one-year space brother, Misha. So he's, uh, he's doing great, and uh, I couldn't be up here with a, with a better, better person to do this with. What's one of the greatest moments you've had up there? Something, if you can describe a moment, a moment that you just said, wow, this is still amazing. I love this. You know, the, uh, well, certainly, you know, doing a spacewalk is the highlight, but it's not, or one of the highlights. Uh, I'll tell you what the other one is here in a second. But it's it's not like this fun kind of thing, you know, that you would you would think it is. You know, it's very uh, challenging, you know, m mentally, somewhat physically. It's uh, uh, you know, it's hard work, and I think it's that type of that type two kind of fun that you say, oh, that you know, a few weeks later, a few months later, you said, you know, that thing that I did really hard, like you know, climbing Mount Everest, that was a lot of fun. But you don't think it's kind of fun when you're doing it. It's definitely, you know, an experience to remember. But uh, um, you know, not like what a lot of people would think it would be like. But the, you know, the other highlight is, you know, just being able to participate in this and you know, do it with a great team. Uh, not only the folks here, but uh, not only my crewmates, but all the people on the ground that make these missions happen. That's that's really the highlight for me. You've uh, been there for 215 days. You're about to break the record for the longest American uh, continuous flight. How you're holding up, and how does it feel, kind of being so long away and being out not on Earth? Yeah. So uh, you know, what's Earth? I kind of forgot what it, what it's like to live down there. It seems like. Um, yeah, and, and I'm I'm being sincere. You know, there are certain like senses and things that I'm like, wow, that seems like so so long ago. And uh, you know, I also look at it like I have a long uh, ways ahead of me too. Um, you know, the other day we figured out I was like, we uh, actually the the other crew that's up here with us, Chell, Kimmy, and Oleg, we kind of crossed over at we both had 61 percent left, and that was a few days. You know, like last week. And, uh, you know, now they have less time uh, percentage left than, than I do. That was our kind of our crossover point. And, uh, yeah, so I do recognize I've been up here a long time, long way to go, but I don't, I don't think it'll be any issue me making it to the end with the same, you know, level of enthusiasm and energy I had uh, going into this. Scott, thank you very much. Uh, just a warm, big hug from uh, Jonathan, Christina, and me here, and everyone at Time. We miss you, and we'll see you when you're back. Thank you. Thanks. Look forward to seeing you guys, too, and uh, great talking to you. Same here. Station, this is Houston ACR. Thank you. That concludes the event.